<laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> All right, XOXO. <laughs> Got a girl. Audrey at Home is filmed in front of a live Pitbull audience. Good morrow and merry meet. My name is Audra and you are in for a treat. All right, y'all, I am a little excited. I'm gonna be doing a Ask Me Anything. I love doing these because, I don't know, I just do. I find it fun. It's interesting to see what questions y'all will come up with. And I have not actually checked to see what they were so I don't have like prepared answers, which I find more fun. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just get started. I asked y'all on the YouTube community tab, which that's usually where I ask questions just because it's easier for me to access it because I'm old and technology is confusing and frightening. All right. First question is what city did you move to? I actually didn't switch cities or anything. I stayed exactly, I stayed in the same city. This actually kind of goes in tandem with another question. Um, which is like, I, I literally moved upstairs. I, <laughs> I, like I was in a one bedroom downstairs in my building and I moved into a two bedroom upstairs. I didn't even switch cities because, um, I like sameness. I don't like all that. Uh, I like where I live. So I'm just going to keep, keep that going. <laughs> uh, the next question, if you could go anywhere on vacation and we'll just pretend the big C doesn't exist for this. Where would you go and why? Y'all, it's been so long since I could even think about a vacation that I have like no idea where I would go. Like, oh. You know what? I I would go to England and visit James uh, because that would be fun and funny. We would both talk about, we would have like long conversations about our dog's anal glands, good times. Uh, <laughs> I would, I would also go to Mexico. Like, so here's the thing. My vacation would be visiting my friends. So I would go to Mexico and visit Emily. I would go to, where is it that Jen is? I always want to say like Baltimore, but that is not like where she is now. Anyway, I would go visit Jen on the East Coast. Uh, I would go visit my friend Yolanda in California. I would visit T in California. And I would visit Teresa in Florida. Flow Rida, if you will. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and there's a few other people I want to visit, but I can't think of them like right off the top of my head. But oh, and I would go visit Tina. And, like, but here's the thing about every day I would visit. I don't want them to touch me. They know. They know. No hugs. They know that this is a no hug zone. No, no touchy touchy zone. All right. <laughs> and then they also asked if you could live in another country, would you? Yes and where. I have not narrowed down, spo. I have not narrowed down like where I would live, specifically because it's hard to find a place that um, accepts my bow bear. Uh, if there weren't rude ass, unnecessary breed restrictions, I'm thinking maybe New Zealand is where I would go, cause that seems nice. And according to TikTok, I, my ethnicity is Australian. I don't know y'all. Uh, so the next one, is there anything that you do in private and not that, that you don't share with your followers? I.e. guilty pleasures, binging shows we would never imagine you loving, etc. Oh, there's tons of stuff I do. So here's the thing about me. There's very specific aspects of my life that I definitely, I'm like screenshotting. Cause listen, in post, I'm going to be putting up your questions as I read them. So it's going to be very like meta. It's not going to be meta. I just made that up. But I think that there's a few things that I do. Like there's a lot, honestly, of like makeup, skincare. There's a lot of products that I buy that I don't necessarily talk about on my channel immediately or at all. Um, not for any reason. Like it's not like, oh, I'm ashamed or whatever. It's just like, I don't feel like it. I, I just don't feel like it. Um, I talk to myself a lot a lot like a lot of my video ideas if I don't if I'm not talking it through with like um, Millie or Emily uh, sometimes Teresa if I'm not talking it through with them I am just talking it out loud to Bo and I watch a lot of trash TV like I just finished watching the other the la like the most recent season of Too Hot to Handle, which was terrible, by the way. Cause like now everybody knows the game, so it's not fun anymore. It's just not fun to me. 
But yeah, I mean, I don't feel like there's like a lot that I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I do in private, but like, I don't, I, I don't know what to say <laughs> besides that. Next question is, how is the bow? It, B-O B is the spelling, handling the move. So yeah, first of all, yes, for those of you all that don't know, Bo, his, he's named after David Bowie. So his name is Bo David, all right? So it's B-O. <laughs> now that I said that out loud, I kind of laughed. Anyways, he is doing very, very well with the move. I really expected him to be a lot worse off. It's taken him a little bit to get used to like where we are now because he keeps trying to go into the building where we used to be and also like there's a lot more like we have valet trash here so we pass by a lot more houses and i didn't think about that but we pass by significantly more apartments than we used to pass by on like on the trash nights so that part is a little rough but he's been doing well he's loving the space y'all like he literally like and the cool thing is like when i'm filming like now he's able to be just like right next to me and it's not like stressful for either one of us and he has space to lie down so it's cool like he's doing it right now and i would put him up but you know the second i try to show him on camera y'all he's gonna he's gonna do his bullshit uh the next question is how did you meet Bo? I got him at a shelter. Whenever the animal shelters around here um, run into an overabundance of animals, they will have $10 adoptions, and that adoption will also include um, a neuter or, and or spay. Like, not and or. A neuter or spay, right? Depending on what you got. Or it could be and or if you get more than one animal. So there we go. I win again. Huh. But I got him at a shelter and it's so funny because I think what always cracks me up is when, from when I got him four years ago, I feel like now, oh my gosh, it was 2018. It was 2018. Holy shit. All right. So from when I got him in 2018 to where he is now is just miles away. He used to have like very little trust, so much separation anxiety. It was very difficult to like leave him and it was just, it was a mess, right? Now though, and he wouldn't sleep under the covers, like he would, he was on top covers and then slowly but surely he started kind of like sneaking under the covers, sneaking under the covers, and now he's always under the covers and he sleeps with his butt in my face. Um, that is supposed, like, and on his side, which is supposed to prove, like, when he, like, legs out, that he loves and trusts me because he literally trusts me to have his back. So, good, 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 I don't know why I couldn't say words, but, like, he's a good boy and he's my sweet baby bear. <laughs> Random question, would you ever wear a beret? Listen, first of all, yes. <laughs> why not? You know, here's the thing about me and my looks and whatever I do. Like, I feel like all of it's always temporary, you know? Like today, the eyebrows, purple. Tomorrow, who knows, you know? Every, all of this is temporary. Like, I mean, do I look good? <laughs> yes. But is this temporary? Also, yes, I can, I'll take this hat off, put on a different hat. I would love to wear a brand. I think that that would be fun. Like, why wouldn't it, that would be a good time. This is a good question. Any tips for moving or things you would have done differently? My, like, I'm always gonna have this tip, get movers. I know that people think that it's expensive, um, but if you think for one second, if you think for one instance, like right now, if you were thinking, I'm gonna move in July, save up for movers. Save up and have movers. It is a lifesaver, it is a time saver, it makes it so much simpler for you to just kind of get on with the unpacking of it all. Because like that's the thing, you pack everything up and then, then you move it and especially at my big age, it gets harder and harder to find friends and whatnot who will help you move and help put all, the, like it just becomes too much. And then even when they are helping, like they are not helping at the level that movers are helping at, which, you know, movers are trying to get in, get out and get the next move going. You know what I mean? Like if you're scheduled first thing in the morning, like they want to do yours, they want to do the next person's, they want to do the person's after that. Normally they, you know, they typically have about three moves in a day. So like that being the case, they want to get moving and they're going to like take care of everything and handle everything very well. And I would definitely say just get movers. I would also say, you know, the hardest part about moving for most of us is like, we are still trying to live in our homes 
and go to work and do everything else like we're supposed to do while also trying to pack up our lives, which is exceedingly difficult. It's very stressful. I feel like the only thing that I would have changed is like, I don't know, already been like a full-time content creator so that the whole thing would have been a little easier because I would have been like, oh, I can just take these four things up. But I, I feel like um, I really did it mostly the way I wanted to. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Ooh, okay. What's your favorite sitcom? I don't know. I, you know, here's the thing. So many of the sitcoms I enjoyed were ruined by the end, right? Because I used to love uh, how, I, how I Met Your Mother, right? Series finale crashed, just destroyed it. Hated it after that. I was like, I, and now I can't even watch it. It's not rewatchable. Um, <laughs> like, not for me. Because of the way that they did that, I was like, it's no longer rewatchable. I hate it. You've ruined it. Uh, I don't feel like I watch a lot of sitcoms, though. I feel like I watch a lot of, like drama like a lot of drama shows I don't like I, I'm not gonna say I don't like sitcoms and don't like to laugh like that but like I feel like my calm comes from being like like scared or like watching Jersey Shore does that count as a sitcom Jersey Shore <laughs> Ooh, I like this. What is your best life hack? So I would say my best life hack is figuring out who you are to the best of your ability at any point in time. I know that that sounded weird, but here's what I mean. We're always changing. We're always evolving. So you're going to constantly be trying to figure out like who you are today, but like making sure that you're doing that check-in with yourself because I think so often it's like how you go to a restaurant, right? And you order the same thing over and over again because you know that you like that thing. And it's not even that like nothing else on the menu is going to be good, right? It's just that you know that this is good, but you never really check in with some of the other, other, other items on the menu that you also know that you might like so you don't really get to check on that and see like how the restaurant is doing overall like you used to kind of and then you just d stop so like when you go try it and you're like oh this isn't as good as i remember it's like is it bad or like who knows that was a weird analogy but here's all i'm saying we are always evolving i am always evolving and i think one of the worst things that we do is feel like once we've gotten to whatever level that that's the end and it's not it, like, it's just, it's not the end. You have much more to do. Much more. Also, final, the be, the final left, I, I don't know. I would also say that um, don't use age as a reason why you can't do something. Just like stop doing that. If you tell yourself like, oh, I'm, you know, whatever and I can't do that, then you're, you're already defeated. Stop using age and time because like we, you, we only get one life. All right, that was a lot. Describe the anatomy of your perfect horror movie. Well, actually, one of my most favorite, like the anatomy of one of my favorite horror movies has already actually been done. Um, <laughs> uh, so The Collector is honestly one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And I think there's multiple things about that that I find very enjoyable. I like the cinematography. I like how they were able to like kind of poke in. That and like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I have quite a few favorite horror movies, but here, neither here nor there. But I really, really like The Collector. I will, honestly, every time I see that it's on Tubi again, I will watch it. Because it comes off of Tubi every so often and then like pops back on. I will watch it and The Collector, The Collector and The Collection. I will watch both of those. Like just... All day. It doesn't even, uh, like I literally, I watched it yesterday. I'll turn it back on, watch it again. Doesn't even face me. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to watch it. Because <laughs> it's just, it's very, very, to me, it's mostly well done. There's some like ugh, parts about it but that aren't great. But for me, I feel like it's mostly well done. Now, I will say that the collection is not as good. The collector is significantly better than the collection, specifically because of the opening scene. But once you get past that, I like the rest of the movie. And I, I don't know if I'm describing an anatomy at all, but it's a it's a taut thriller about a home invasion, which I typically do not like home invasion movies. Um, but this one in particular, I do enjoy because of how it's done. I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody. Like, I still can, but who cares? Why did you move? How did you start living in Texas? I moved to Texas about a year ago for work. What are your current plans for YouTube after reaching 13K by your birthday? 
So first of all, I don't think that that is actually gonna happen. I don't think I'm gonna reach 13K by my birthday. I'd like to, I don't think it's gonna happen. I have not been posting enough and that's okay. Um, I'm fine with that. What I would say is, okay, I moved to Texas because I was going to USC and uh, I needed to, financially could not continue to go to school at the time. I also uh, was still staying there, like trying to find a job and figure shit out. Cause I was like, maybe I want to go back to school in a year or so and like just, you know, chill here for a little bit and then go back to school. But then I got into a car accident, needed to come home. My mom was already here. So I was like, all right, so like now I'm here and I hate it here. Uh, but my current plans for YouTube after reaching 13K by my birthday, I mean, it's, just, it's I haven't changed anything. Like I feel like I'm gonna keep having fun on my channel doing the things that I want to do. And I'm always gonna do that. Sorry, I keep like, the way that I, I need to change like a couple things about this setup because like I actually cannot see the timer. So I have to keep like doing my head like that. Anyways, um, but yeah, I think that one of the things that I really committed to a long time ago, maybe last year, year well, I would say year before last, is I just started realizing like, I'm gonna do what the fuck I wanna do on my channel. I'm, I'm not gonna feel like I have to be hemmed in or have to do anything in particular. I don't feel like I have to have a niche. I just wanna do what I wanna do. People come for different forms of like, whatever videos I have, like they come for that and that's okay. And I have accepted that like, some videos are gonna have, you know, 1K all the time. Other videos, there's only 300 people that are interested in that, and that's okay. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna like not make those videos because I hate that I did that with some stuff that I like content I really enjoyed making, but I got so caught up in the numbers that I stopped making it. So like, I don't wanna do that again. So I'll just continue on this. This isn't a question, but a statement, and it's your dog is adorable, and he says, Thank you. I also say thank you. So I have this question, which what are your favorite parts about being non-binary? Has the way you engage with the world changed since you came out as non-binary? I will say this. I will say that the pressure that I used to put on myself to present in any particular way is gone. It's alleviated. <laughs> like I don't feel like when I go to work, I have to look a specific way. I don't feel like when I leave my house, I have to look a specific way. And it's just made it easier for me to just like not feel like I'm only attractive when I do X, you know? So that's really the biggest difference is that like all of the pressure that I used to put on myself, like, oh, we're going to eat. So I have to look, you know, very feminine and what, I don't worry about it. And I also, as odd as this may sound, I don't worry about the way that I walk. I don't stress so much about like, is my walk feminine enough, masculine enough? Like I just let my walk do whatever the hell it wants to do. I know that's weird, but I had a whole thing going on with my walk. It was, it was, it was a situation. All right. Did you make sure the neighborhood you moved to was a decent area with low crime, much peace and love? So as I mentioned before, I moved upstairs. So like, I didn't even change neighborhoods. I just moved upstairs y'all. Like, <laughs> It was a lot, it was a big move because I was still having to work and at the time I was honestly, I was trying to do it while I was working 12 hour days and trying to like find time to pack and all of this stuff. At this point, for sure, the move vlog is up on Patreon for channel members. It's up for channel members and patrons, so that's a thing. All right, next. Congrats on the move. Oh, the picture of you and Bo. My question would be if you can or would change your mind to an opinion you had on any topic, movie or makeup related, what would it be and why? Movie related, I would change my mind on the reimagining of A Nightmare on Elm Street in that it is not a good movie. It is a good time but there's many things wrong with it. And I'm likely going to be talking about this. I'm not sure if I'll talk about it here or on Twitch, but I'm likely gonna talk about it. I'm gonna do like my own little breakdown of, of why it, that one worked versus why Friday, like that one did not work versus why Friday, Friday the 13th worked. Because there, there's gonna, there's new ones I think coming out probably this year, maybe next year. So I wanna talk about it. And I hope y'all are ready to hear about it. <laughs> Uh, so the next one, congratulations on the move. Thank you. What is your favorite thing about your new place? The space. 
and the lighting. Y'all, it's getting dark right now. I'm sure like a little bit of the lighting changed, but it's not freaking yellow in here. <laughs> the lighting isn't all yellow so I can film at any time of the day and it's like quite beautiful. Just having like a whole ass room for YouTube, glorious, glorious. And do you miss anything about your old place? Yes, here's the thing. I have a nasty habit in which I smoke cigarettes. I know, it's horrible, sue me. But, this is a non-smoking establishment, all right y'all? And the thing is, what I would do is early in the morning, because I have to go to work at a ridiculous time, but early in the morning, I would sit on my patio and smoke secretly. And then in the evening, I would do the same. And the reason I could do it is because they were like brick kind of walls on either side so you couldn't exactly see me and uh, it was like a little secret now though I have found that being on because I was on the first floor being on this and I was on the corner so like being on the corner really helped out but now I'm still kind of on a corner but I have found a another secret smoke buddy in which we both kind of go out at the same time at night acknowledge each other with a puff and like move on <laughs> Congrats on the new apartment. Are you still in Texas, if I may ask? I hope you love the new place. I do love the new place, and yes, I am still in Texas. Um, you know, I would love it if I weren't, but I am, so that's where it is. This is where my mom is. Um, we will leave together. <laughs> Okay, I love this pic, love your channel, and I agree that whenever Bo makes a cameo in your videos, I say, hey Bo, out loud. Question, you've mentioned leaving Texas again. If you could live anywhere, where would it be and why? Y'all asked me that, and every time it's asked, I, like, I always think, I always lean towards New Zealand, but New Zealand is, is hateful towards pit bulls, so I can't live there. Like, I want, like, there's so many places that have restrictions about pit bulls, and, like, they obviously know nothing about the breed. Like, literally nothing. Bo is a sweet angel teddy bear who more, more, is more likely to kill you with loves and licks than anything else. And he's very heavy. He's so heavy. Um, <laughs> next one. It brings me so much joy whenever I catch a glimpse of the pupper in your videos. And, yes, I call all dogs puppies. Same. If I had to ask a question, it would be whether or not you have family or friends from IRL who watch your videos and what they think about you doing YouTube videos. Are they supportive or do they judge it? I have friends who do watch it and, um, and my mom watches. They're very supportive. I like I have people at work who watch my channel and they like they've started coming around and being like, how do you do this? How do you do eyeliner? How do you? I'm like, I I just do like <laughs> I'm like this is just like a it's a it's a skill I have oh, oh, oh. but yeah it, everybody's very supportive everybody who knows is really supportive and nobody's weird about it uh, love the pick the look of being relaxed my question would be if you could collab with any brand who would it be and what would you call your palette or collection of products it would likely be an indie brand um, mostly because as y'all can see I don't really fit into the neutral love, like, you know, so I, I first and foremost don't feel like any large major brand would want to do the collaboration that I want to do, first of all. Um, secondly, indies have more space to move and change with what I want to do. I would probably want to have like a little bit of a, like a small bit of a brush collection because I would like more um, brush collections to come with more like painty type brushes with like my my style of applying makeup you know kind of brushes you know more stuff like this that would allow you to be a little bit more detailed a little bit more precise and it would just be a collection of something like like that you know um and less of the face brushes and all of that kind of good stuff because i think once people find a face brush like you find it and you're like, this is my face brush until the end of time, until it disappears, like I am right now with my Marc, ja Marc Jacobs brushes. My feelings crush. I can't, I'm like, I'm never going to find this brush again. I have three of them, yes, but I can't rebuy if, when those go bad. Like, it sucks balls. Um, but, um, it would likely be, I don't know, I don't know exactly how, it would probably be this color scheme that I have on my face, you know? Oop, there's the train, y'all. A man invented this, I guarantee you, because they decided at some point that the ding ding dings weren't enough and the flashing lights weren't enough and the little gates coming down and weren't enough. So they were like, we're also gonna have this artificial train noise, which is annoying. 
to say the least. All right, <laughs> this one was, I don't have a question, just had to comment on this pic. You both look so happy and content and it's just beautiful. Thank you. Cause he is a fucking angel and I love him so much. But Dark Angel, I forgot to answer the, que <laughs> the question, like, like what brand? Um, so like, I don't know, like, obviously I'm friends with Josh from Drench, so definitely I would wanna collab with Drench. Um, I think that Josh would be very, like, I, one, I want to collab with them because I feel like Josh is a good business person, has good business sense, has a good head on their shoulders. And I also think that Josh would have, like, would understand my vision and help me to make that actually come to life and not just be like, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. Like, and not want to just present me with shit that's already there so I could actually, like, make, oh my gosh, speaking of Drench, I haven't purchased the new palette and I really need to buy that. Anyways, I just realized that. I wanted to buy the new one. But I've been working so much that I just haven't really been able to buy most makeup at this point in time. I've really just been buried in work. Um, but yeah, I think for sure, Drench, Drench, I would like to have like a small collection of favorites with Terra Moons. Um, Cause that would be fun for Terra Moons and Davina. I would like to have like a small collection of favorites with them. Like not create something because I still really want to play with their shadows more but I'd like to have a collection of like my favorite ones from them. So that's that's the that on that. Sorry, that took a little bit. Okay, this, <laughs> wow. Cut to the heart of the matter and hurt my feelings. Any regrets about YouTube or something you would do differently? I have a whole host of YouTube regrets. Uh, so <laughs> the main YouTube regret that I have is not believing myself. I refused to believe in myself as a cre content creator. I refused to look at it as something that I could actually like make a job if I really, really wanted to. I refused to think that I was making content that anybody cared about. Uh, so I just constantly um, just underestimated myself. And the other regret I have is letting numbers, which I talked about briefly pr previously, is letting the analytics and the numbers get to me to the point where I just like, wouldn't make a specific form of content because I was like, oh, nobody's watching it. Now I'm at this point where I'm like, it, it, it's probably gonna take me an eternity to grow because I just, one, I don't want to, I don't like niching. I don't like it. I feel like when you do that, and I've seen it with a lot of creators, but when you do that, it puts you in a position to where if you get tired of doing that thing, you're stuck doing it. Like a lot of times people don't, won't always follow you to the new thing. Um, but the other thing too is that like it's my channel and I should be able to enjoy the content that I am creating and I don't like creating content specifically for the uh, like obviously we want views right but I really don't want to create content just because I know it gets the views because then I'll just be dead inside like for real instead of just like as an aesthetic all right <laughs> was there ever a movie that was too scary for you I don't know if there was one that was too scary. I'm not gonna say that there was like, I don't think that there was one that was like, like initially, there are some movies that the first time I saw them, I was like, uh, -uh nope. Um, I don't watch home invasion movies like The Strangers, I haven't seen. The Strangers, like any of The Strangers movies, I haven't seen them. Uh, because as soon as I started realizing that that's what they were gonna be, I, I quit watching them. Psychologically, I would say uh, Funny Games, which is quite honestly, not the German version, the American one. I haven't seen the German version. Um, but the American version of Funny Games um, was quite honestly one of the most heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, hideously, violently awful movies that just like broke me for a little bit. I was like, why would you, why would you, why would you? I would say that. I would say funny games. So finally I have, are there any makeup, skincare, fragrance brands that you never try even if they were gifted to you? Yes. I don't know any brands specifically that I would say, but like, so for instance, um, likely any kind of, I'm not gonna say brand, but I'm gonna say almost any celebrity perfume, no. I don't like them. I also really don't like a lot of perfume perfumes. Uh, alcohol content is part of the problem. 
Um, but, and that's the thing about a lot of celebrity perfumes is I feel like they're very heavy on the alcohol and less on fragrance. So it doesn't take long before it just smells like alcohol to me. Um, makeup brands, obviously Jefferson Starship. I, I don't care. Like you can send it to me if you want to. I'm never going to try it. I'm never going to put it on. It's not going to happen. Not today, not tomorrow, and definitely not the day after that. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to add uh, Juvia's to that list right now. Right now, Juvia's, I'm going to have to add them. Currently, Jaclyn Cosmetics is on that list right now. I can't. Tower 28. Tower 28. You know why. All right, y'all, that is it. That's the video. Thank you for all of you who submitted your questions. I love doing these. They're so fun. I try to do like these and uh, unpopular opinions like every three or four months or so just to kind of like check in with y'all, say hello. For those who are new here, you know, you find out some new information about me that you were dying to, you weren't, you weren't, you didn't care. All right, anyways, but the point is, I have a good time doing these. They're such a fun video to make, and I appreciate all of you who take time out of your day to ask those questions. All right, I'm going to go. My mouth is dry, and I have a Zoom hangout to go to. We're going to be watching. Uh, I think it's set it off, and I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so that is it. Hi, Bo Beer. I know, we're going to go sit down in a minute. Watch my titty. All right. If you like this video, please do me a flavor and give this video two thumbs up. Not two. If you like this video, please do me a flavor and give this video a thumbs up so then that way the algorithm goddess can do what she does best, ew, which is push me further down into the algorithm so that I can continue to do what? Whatever the fuck I want to. Also, as usual, huge shout out to my patrons and spooky bays yeah without which i truly would not be able to keep the bats in the belfry and the spiders firmly ensconced in their webs to all of you who watch like share and subscribe i appreciate you as well and remember it costs zero zero dollars to be kind it's so good for your soul because if you don't take care of it apparently Bo is gonna come for it because he is in a mood right now let me see if i can show him there's gonna be mess everywhere when i show him look at it look at it all right y'all until next time xoxo <laughs> got the girl <laughs>